G'day, I'm Ray Tones from New Zealand. I'm going to talk today about is the Big Bang correct or not? In 1978, Alan Stockton published a paper in the Astrophysics Journal um, asking the question of whether quasars are at the distance implied by their red shift. Quasars have very large red shifts compared to uh, many galaxies. Uh, there don't seem to be any nearby ones if we take the red shift at face value as implying they have huge velocities and are at huge distances. So he examined this question and he did it by a very good method. He looked at um, pairs of quasars and galaxies that were seen rather close in the sky to see whether they had the same red shift. And he found in the case of some quasar galaxy pairs, they did have the same or very similar red shift which supported the idea that they really were uh, associated with those galaxies and that they were at the distance implied by their red shift. I don't disagree with that conclusion that he made at all. He also concluded that the other ones were, that didn't match were probably line of sight um, coincidences and they really, really were at a different distance. And he said there's no reason to believe that there's two types of quasars some of which might be uh, at a different distance. Now this one I'm going to call into question. In 1990, another paper in the Astrophysics Journal Supplementary Series re-examined this question. In the intervening years, quite a few more quasar red shifts had been determined. And Burbage, Hewitt, Nalaka and Dev Gupta published a paper which looked at the data that had been originally gathered by Stockton and additional data that they had it themselves. Their finding was very clear that they, although some galaxy quasar pairs did appear to be at the same redshift, they found there was another whole set that had very different redshift uh, and they looked at these ones and showed that the relationship between them was such that, uh, that although they had different redshifts, the distances between them in the sky did strongly indicate that they really were at the same distance because there were too many close pairs in the sky to be a case of just coincidence. They had to be really associated with them. If the Big Bang is correct and quasars really are at very large distances implied by their red shift, then all of the pairs of galaxies and quasars that we see close in the sky are just line of sight coincidences. In that case, the separation that we see between the galaxy and the quasar is just a random occurrence and there's no reason that it should be related to the distance of the galaxy. On the other hand, if Helton Arbor is right and quasars are ejected by galaxies, then the separation between quasars and galaxies is a real separation and the further away the galaxy is, the smaller the separation will be due to the perspective effect. So this affords a test. Is the Big Bang right or is Helton Arp right? This is Stockton's data as presented by Burbage and others showing that quite clearly as we go uh, to larger red shifts for the galaxy, the separation of the quasar from the galaxy gets smaller. This is the additional data collected by Burbage and others showing the same thing even more clearly for a much larger sample. Quite clearly, more distant galaxies have closer quasar separations. If you believe that red shift is a, a measure of velocity and distance and you have as an article of faith the Big Bang, then you cannot explain this relationship uh, this, between the separation of quasars and galaxies based on the red shift of the galaxy. It makes no sense at all. That's probably why those people have ignored it. They cannot explain it. So the conclusion is pretty clear to me. I think anyone who looks at this from an unbiased point of view will see Stockton is right that some quasars really are at the red shift and distance, the cosmological distance implied by their red shift. And so are Burbage and the others right that some quasars are not the distance implied by their red shift, 
they are associated with galaxies at much lower rate shift. Once we accept that, that some quasars have some red shift component that is not cosmological, that is not connected with distance, it explains why when we make scatter diagrams for galaxies and quasars we get very different results. For galaxies, when we show the brightness versus the red shift, we get a very neat diagram that shows that if we take brightness as a dimming as we get further away, that makes a nice tidy relationship. But for quasars this is not so. That diagram alone makes us very suspicious that quasars really are at the distances that cosmologists say they are. So this, this new finding makes it uh, very clear why this is so, that some quasars are not at that distance, so when we do this plot they will mess the whole diagram up. Um, the conclusion is the Big Bang is bung. We cannot rely on red shifts as a measure of distances particularly for quasars, but for some galaxies that's also true. The Big Bang is back.